I went to Fairleigh Dickinson University. I, was, I wanted to be a, a psychologist, possibly a neuropsychologist. I didn't have any intentions of becoming a minister. I wasn't even remotely, um, I didn't even, that didn't even come into my mind. I didn't know anything about that. And so, uh, you know, I did what I had to do to become a, a psychologist. So I graduated with a degree in psychology. You know, I had a pastor, um, a phenomenal pastor. He's, he's still my hero. Um, I was going to his church in New York, and part of the service was feeding, uh, making sandwiches for the homeless. And so I became, um, uh, well, I need to go a little bit before that. I was raised Catholic. Um, and uh, my intentions before I became pregnant were to become a, um, a Dominican sister. Um, and of course, that wasn't gonna work since I was pregnant. <laughs> uh, and I had, um, I had a difficult time with the Cat Catholic Church. It just wasn't the place for me, so I left. And I had a friend of mine who had shared about this church in New York, and I didn't want anything to do with, with any church. Um, but she wanted me to go with her to this church, um, and she kept nagging me. So I went, I finally gave in and went to this church in New York. Um, and when I, I saw this church, it was a hole in a wall. And I thought it was a cult <laughs> because everybody was so nice, you know. Uh, and I thought, oh my gosh, she has brought me to a church that uh, it's a cult. They, they wanted to know my name. They were hugging me. I said, oh, I'm in trouble. So all I wanted to do was, was finish the service and go home. Um, and the, the preacher preached about Jesus turning tables. And I thought, this man is insane, talking about a Jesus that is turning tables and is getting upset. I said, oh, this is just horrible. And then uh, he went into talking about forgiveness, forgiving uh, forgiving ourselves and forgiving others, and it's okay to feel emotions as long as we move past that and are able to forgive ourselves and those around me, you know, those around us. And uh, at that moment, I literally, what, what I call a J uh, John Wesley moment, you know, I had a warming of a heart. And at that moment, I recognized that God had forgiven me and um, that it was okay for me to forgive others no matter what happened in my life. Um, all of the um, childhood uh, uh, tribulations that I had, I was able to release that. All the, the pain that I had endured, I was able to let that go. Uh, and, and I did, I left it there in that service. My friend never came back and, and here I am, uh, a pastor. <laughs> it was a United Methodist Church. It was a United Methodist Church, and I fell in love with the United Methodist Church. But, uh, and so the pastor said to me, as he got to know me a little bit, he said, I think you're called to be a pastor. And I looked at him and, and said, you're, you're, you're crazy, and, and I went about my business. Uh, I became a leader within, a, you know, a young adult. I was a young adult, and I became a leader. Uh, and then again, I was going to school for psychology. So when I was about to graduate, my professors who uh, were Jewish, uh, I had come in and given her uh, my recommendation letter so she can uh, give me a recommendation for the next level that I had to go to. And she ripped my application up. And she said to me that I was, I was called to be a spiritual leader that I had everything that it took to be able to graduate with uh, degrees in psychology, but that I wouldn't be fulfilling my purpose that God had placed me here. So I either thought that she wanted to corrupt the Christian system or that I really had to be in prayer over this. And, uh, and so I, uh, I didn't like that. And, you know, September 11th happened, and the, the church that I was in was in the village uh, and was uh, greatly affected by what happened in September 11th. And um, I couldn't go back. I couldn't, I couldn't go back. Um, I, w I was afraid to take the train. 
uh, I didn't I didn't want to go back so um, I joined a United Methodist Church in New Jersey near my house and that pastor um, helped me to apply to seminary school um, however I didn't really take it serious and didn't think that I would get accepted I did get accepted um, and uh, I just thought this is insane you know Th this is this is crazy all I saw was these sort of um, holier than thou people kind of walking around saying prayers for everything and and uh, you know here I am with baggy pants and a hat and with a, a street attitude and uh, I just I didn't really it was it was surreal you know um, the perception of God through their eyes and the perception of God through my eyes was uh, greatly different I saw people that were dressed nice they had nice suits and nice shirts and they sounded nice and they sounded like they knew a lot about God and about religion and 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 things like that but it never connected with me uh, you know the 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 intellectual, uh, uh, ecclesiastical, whatever you want to call it, uh, concept of God, I just couldn't get with it. The God that I can get with was a relational God, a God that was, uh, that was willing to sacrifice his own life for my behalf. And my call, or at least the sense that I felt in my call was that uh, me being appointed to a community was that my life didn't belong to me it belonged to them and if I had to die for them then that's what I had to do uh, and I take that very serious um, so I, I struggled with the intellectual concept of God and the relational God and so um, you know but uh, when I was at Princeton, my professors were um, uh, were definitely strange, and so um, I <laughs> I learned a lot from them um, because I towards the end of my seminary life, I began to realize that uh, it was a lot more complicated than that, you know, um, and my professors at Princeton really pushed me uh, to the very edge and and you know uh, they uh, they basically said you know come with your attitude and then we'll give you the education so don't change who you are we're just gonna give you the education and 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 then you take that and you change the world with that you know so that was my experience with uh, Princeton and uh, being a, a seminary student. But it was strange, definitely strange. For someone who's ex you know, trying to figure out who they are in God or if God is calling them, I think I, the advice that I would give is the same advice for anyone who's sort of discerning what's going on in their life is, you know, first and foremost for me is, is go to Scripture. Um, you know, uh, because you're not going, the biblical text is never going to fail you. It just isn't. Go, go and pray. Pray, um, pray honestly, you know, because that's, that's the other thing that I believe that people are kind of phony about. They're always saying they're going to pray for you, you know. <laughs> that drives me nuts. You know, because the truth is, is that that's as far as the prayer has gone, you know, M perhaps, you know, I'm going to pray for you and then, you know, uh, but, but pray diligently, pray honestly and, and go um, put your pastor to work, put your spiritual leader to work, put me to work, you know, um, it, it, that's part of my call, my, my call is to nurture um, someone who feels like they've called, been called into discipleship, you know? What does that look like? 
Um, put your pastor to work. Um, pray with your pastor and go through that discernment process with your pastor. Uh, and hopefully to the pastor, don't ever sway away someone who feels they have a call in their heart, you know. Um, I know it's a, if someone is feeling like they're called, uh, you know, it is, it is, it's hard. It's hard, you know, um, it's scary. And, but at the same time, it's probably the most rewarding thing that I can ever um, imagine. <laughs>